This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where today... I am giving a recap of the presentation that I gave at Rockstars, Real Estate Rockstars, for those that went. This is going to be a a recap. And the same similar-ish presentation of what I gave at RubeCon, Real Estate Wealth Builders, the week right after that. Um, And this episode is going to be about how I transitioned from working directly with buyers and sellers to being an outbound referral agent. I can't yet say outbound referral only because I am still taking clients by request if for some reason they do not want to work with an agent that I trust. (laughs) Okay, I'll take them. But I'm pretty much transitioning. For those that don't know, I am transitioning to strictly like outbound referral agent. And because I knew from the very, very start that I was going to be moving. You know, my wife, like we're stationed in Tucson, not by choice. My wife is retiring from the Air Force after 20 years this Friday, and we're moving. You know, like we're Tucson was never a place that we wanted to stay in forever. And, you know, family calls, her family calls. So we're going up across the country to Minnesota, and my business is unaffected. So that's in case you've ever had thoughts of moving or you just want to get your time back. Watch this episode on YouTube because I am sharing my slides. And if for some reason you're in the car, not if for some reason, that's typically where people listen to podcasts. So if you're listening to this in the car, you can't watch this on YouTube, just hit me up, hit me, hit Shelby up. We're Allie the Agent, the Shelby Show. I'll give you my slides. And whether you are a a licensed agent already, I'll give you like the rock stars presentation that I gave. Or if you're not a licensed agent, the other presentation, which pretty much gives the same value, but different just tailored to those that are not yet agents. I'll give you the presentation for real estate wealth builders that I gave. But Shelby, before I get started, do you have any questions? No, cool. I don't do have not- any questions. I muted myself so you couldn't hear me chewing. I, you, if you, Again, if you're on YouTube, you probably see I'm fucking eating. So Ali, no questions. I loved your presentation at Rockstars. I'm, you know, I wish I could have seen it for a second time at RubeCon, but at least I get to see it today and ask questions. So let's fucking hit it. Yeah. And thank you. It it was actually like a pretty, it was a good hit at RubeCon. I have three people that are interested in becoming agents. Well, actually one of them is is already an agent. She wants to switch over to our community because she's like, I'd never even thought about being an outbound referral only agent. So she wants access to us. So by the way, if you have any questions ever hit us up, like we answer literally, well, I don't want to say every single message, but if you're a real person and you're nice, (laughs) we will, we respond to DMs. We're real people. So this Shelby show, Allie the agent, and let's get started. So I'm sharing my screen here now. How I used to spend my time was working directly with buyers and sellers. And it got to the point where I know how this sounds, but it it was really just like, I had too many clients to handle because I was still W2 when I worked, when I worked with buyers and sellers, I did that for the first year of me being licensed. And during that first year of me being licensed, I was just a part-time real estate agent because I was still a full-time special agent in the Air Force traveling, all that shit. So everyone always said to focus on sellers to get your time back. And I, I started tracking the amount of hours that I spent with each type of client, buyers, sellers, and referrals. Because I was like, honestly, it's because I, I preferred working with buyers and I wanted to prove it wrong. And I did prove it wrong. <laughs> so I'll get that. I'll get into that in the next slide. But I wanted to become an outbound referral agent because I needed more time for myself because I couldn't handle the volume of clients that I had. And, and again, I know how that sounds like, oh, boo hoo, you had so many clients to handle. Ah." But this has saved me so much time where now I have time to see Shelby a lot more out of these podcasts (laughs) and really just do what, do whatever. But I mean, I choose to end up working more, but I can work smarter now. So let's begin. Let's go to the next slide here. Dude, I had okay. that moment of this is where-, where I was like, am I in charge of clipping slides? You know, when you're like, next slide, I'm like, oh shit, is that me? Okay. <laughs> Go on. All the golden retriever vibes that you mentioned in the last episode. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love you, Shelby. <laughs> okay, so this is like an example of, of me just, okay, so I downloaded my transaction sheet. This is how 
I wanted to prove are sellers the way to go? Should I focus more on buyers? Should I focus more on referrals? And the only way for me to quantify it was to was to realize how much I was worth per hour. Because otherwise, there was really like no way for me to quantify it otherwise. Because remember, like when I first be- got licensed, I was still in the Air Force. And that is easier to quantify how much my hourly pay was worth. Because I didn't want to leave the Air Force, it making 120K and you know not ever seeing a medical bill to becoming a self-employed where I have to work more and now I have to pay taxes. <laughs> a lot more rather. So I just wanted to make sure like I wasn't going to be cutting my hourly pay too significantly. So at the time I was making like about, I think it was like a hundred dollars ish an hour in the military. And I wanted to see how much am I making being an agent, but not just being an agent, where is my time best spent? And so I, this is like an example of some of my transactions that I downloaded for 2023. And over here, you can see the pink or the magenta, whatever you want to call it, it, they're outbound referrals. The blue are sellers and the greens are buyers. So 2023, as you can tell, majority of is just outbound referrals. And yes, I spent some time counting how many hours I spent with each type of buyer, with, with, with each buyer, with each seller, each referral, because everyone is different. So I wanted to make sure that like my, my numbers are the most accurate. And this is where you're going to think I'm fucking crazy because yes, I counted each hour. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're right. I am. I am crazy. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm crazy. What can I say? <laughs> so, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to be wasting my time. If I'm going to be leaving W2, which is quote unquote secure, even the military is not secure income because of budget cuts and because of sequestration, like shit happens. People are let go, even in the military. I've seen it happen. So I was like, you know what? Let me just make sure that I'm I'm spending my time smartly. Smartly? As I say smartly, the word's not even it's not even a word. <laughs> Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an example of the different categories of how much I of how I was categorizing how much time I spent with each client. So again, if you're driving, best to watch this on YouTube, but I will make this as as audio friendly as possible. So under the buyer client and seller client and referral client, you need to spend time even acquiring, you know, the client. How do you how much time spent into finding them or them finding you? And then how many hours did you spend driving? How many property tours, like hours did you spend touring properties, which if you want to know all about touring properties, check out the episode that just dropped right before this, where Shelby goes into step-by-step how she gives property tours. Uh, There's time spent on negotiation, both as a buyer's agent and a seller's agent, a listing agent, social media, time spent on inspections and photos. And because in the state of Arizona, a licensed agent has to be at the property throughout the duration of all the inspections. That takes time, guys. And what I consider or what I call WSHTF, which is when shit hits the fan because it always does. And post-closing, sometimes maybe say you don't get paid or they have questions after or your listing client accidentally sold, sent their Amazon packages to their old address and they want you to help. There's still stuff after closing. So I, I tallied up how much I was spending per like how many hours I was spending with each buyer, with each seller, with each referral. And this is what I found. Let me skip two slides ahead here. I found that my hourly rate working with buyers was in 2023 was $574.65 per hour. My hourly rate with sellers was half of that, 269 and hourly rate working with referrals was in the middle, 400, almost $420 an hour. So I made the least amount working per hour with sellers. I made the most amount working per hour with buyers, but I saved the most amount of time working with referrals. And even though it's like a difference of $160 per hour working with referral versus me working with buyers, the amount of time that I saved is is a no brainer for me to continue working outbound referrals. I feel like it's it's what I like. You know, I I end up falling in love with the process with the process of prospecting, and especially now with YouTube, 
So that's what I'm focusing on. I feel what I like is what a lot of agents don't like doing, which is finding the clients and I can find the clients. (laughs) I just need you to close them. So I'm going to stop here and see if Shelby has any questions. I was just going to say, I do think it's so what Allie did is, is really important for each one of us to do is to try a bunch of things. Like in the beginning, her first year, she was fucking doing all the things, try it and then reflect on what you like and what you don't like. Or if you're the type of person who can just imagine, then maybe that will cut a step. But most of us need to live it to experience it, to understand it. But then once you've done that, instead of just keep pushing forward blindly, like, you know, fucking just hustle culture and grit it out and all that stuff, like taking the time to reflect on what you like and what you don't like and do the analysis on your return. Because I bet this is, you know, Ali, we already talked about she's a fucking, she's one of a kind over there. (laughs) So this, this, these results might not be the same for every person. I love listings. Like I will not work with a buyer, but I fucking love listings. Um, So for me, this would be different potentially like my analysis, but across the board, the fact that she was able to take the time, reflect, analyze, and then come up with a logical way ahead in her business to capitalize on what she likes doing, what she's good at and make the most money while doing it. Is that not the goal? You know? So I'm just supporting you, Allie. That's all. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because everyone was always like, Hey, just get listings. And especially now at this time, like by the time this episode drops we might be that much i mean we're gonna be that much closer to the july decision with the buyers and all that stuff so of course these are my numbers down to the penny of course your numbers are not going to match and also this the the slide that i'm sharing now breaks down a little bit more of an example of how much i was spending per seller per buyer per referral and you can tell here that i was the one there another reason why my seller hourly rate was so low is because i was the one that the sellers wanted me to do the open houses. So I hadn't yet had the conversation of me telling them, the sellers, that I was going to have a open house specialist go Mm. instead of me because I I was doing it because I wanted to get more buyers because buyers were worth more of my time. So that's why I did the open houses. But also if you don't do open houses, that eliminates a lot of hours right there. And of course, right now, the the question is probably what is the formula to find out aside from tracking, which you're freaking crazy and doing, I get it. By the way, I have this tracker. So, so it's so simple, but if you want me to give this to you, I am more than happy to give this to you. Just reach out to me. I'm Allie, the agent on social media, A-L-I, more than happy to give it to you. Don't email me. My emails get lost. (laughs) So text me if you have my number or just hit me up on Instagram. I'm more than happy to give this to you. So once you have uh, tallied all of your hours and you don't have to go back for the full year. Cause I understand how like draining that must feel to go back through your entire 2023 transactions or your rolling 12, maybe just pick the last month, depending on how much business you do. Maybe just pick the last month, maybe pick the last quarter and just focus on that. But once you have the number of hours that you've spent working with each buyer and seller and referral, you take the number, the total GCI that you've worked with, that you've gotten from buyers and you take the number of hours and you just divide the two. How much did I make GCI working with buyers? How much did I make, you know, divide that by the number of hours, same thing for sellers, GCI that I made with sellers divided by the number of hours that I worked with them. And same thing for referrals. How much did I make total GCI with referrals divided by the number of hours that I spent altogether? Also very important. Do not forget to include those that never closed because that's still your time. So you want to make sure that you're including the buyers that stood you up or, you know, that ghosted you, the sellers that ended up going with somebody else, or even took their listing off the market and referrals that never closed because that's still your time. So make sure that you're including that. Otherwise you're only cheating yourself. And so that's where I found my numbers there. But so a lot of people at this time typically say, yeah, but referrals are 25%. Like, why would I work for 25%? When I can just do it myself, I have a good process. And maybe you do. And then, you know, just skip this episode. You know, if you don't want to be an outbound referral, then fuck it, keep doing, keep helping buyers and sellers. But one thing that I learned from our community is our community of five pillars is that we do a lot of 30% referrals. Actually, sometimes people even do more. And especially in my case, where the referrals that I was giving out, the clients that I was giving out, they weren't just random people that I'd never met. They were my friends. They were people in the military, like, 
they already knew me. They had trust in me. So they, I do not call them leads. They were straight up clients. So I wasn't giving people leads. I was giving people clients. So therefore it was really easy to say, Hey, this person's already pre-approved. They already know that they're PCSing there. They already have orders to go to Luke 30% referral. Here you go. And so that's where the numbers kind of like, well, numbers always come into play, I think. But typically you would need to have four referrals, right? At 25% in order to make up the 100% that you could have made with working with a buyer or seller directly. But just the change of making it instead of 25% referral to 30% referral, you don't need to do four in order to match up to that one listing or that one buyer. So here in this slide that I'm sharing now, this is the average number of hours that it takes me to work with a buyer to close a seller and referral. So with buyers, it took me, it takes me typically 2023 numbers. It took me 31 hours to work with each typical buyer from the beginning, from even finding them as a client to close and maybe after close too. Hey, what's the name of the utility company again? Or, you know, whatever miscellaneous questions there are after the fact. And for sellers, it was 36. For referrals, it was less than eight. It was 7.85. So I would much rather spend seven hours working with eight hours, let's just go round up, eight hours working with each referral versus 31, or in the 30s, you know, 30 hours working with buyers or sellers. I think that the question that most people are probably thinking, I think they're, this could be a bad assumption, but I assume that they're all with you where they're like, yeah, I mean, that makes total sense that I could just have less hours, still a good amount of income, you know, get back freedom, still make money, all the things. I think that the question they're all thinking of is like, how the fuck are you getting so many leads that are actual clients? And I do think that that that's not what we're going to talk about today. I do think we should do. And actually listeners, if you like, if you want to know how Allie is able to make $200,000 from the referral business, not just the idea of referrals, but how she's doing her lead management, her lead generation and her brand development then let us know and we can do a whole episode on that piece as well. Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. Yeah, and if you want these slides, hit either one of us up. I'm more than happy to share them. So, and then a lot of times here too, people are like, okay, I have found an agent. Or maybe the question is like, how do you find an agent, right? Like I, okay, so I'm working in, in whatever city. Salt Lake City, and I want to become an outbound referral agent, how do I find an agent to, to refer these out to? Vetting them is everything. And I can we can go super deep into vetting, but at a basic level, what I do for, for referral agents is I have a whole, of course, I have a spreadsheet of who I like referring to and who I don't refer to, those that have burned me because I if you've checked out my social media or if you're friends with me on social media, you know that I have been burned in the past. So reach out to me before you send a referral out to Bossier City, Louisiana. Please reach out to me. <laughs> so the vetting. What luckily we're in a community where we're with this like worldwide brokerage, we could just look it up, right? We could just like anybody can in a big in a big brokerage. There's a database, you can go there and look up, search up agents in that city. From there, I, this is, this is, by the way, in case I don't know anybody in that city, of course, first I looked at my, I look at my spreadsheet and see who's good, see who I like, see who closes, you know, who's a good agent that actually closes. Um, and then I'll just refer to them. But if I have no idea about, you know, any, any real estate agents in the city, I reach out to my network, um, of course. And then in case they say no, then I go to my brokerage and I look at the, look at their information. From there, I take a couple of names, I Google them, and I actually do not choose the ones that have the most amount of Google reviews because typically, typically, not always, they're either team leaders or brokerage owners where they will not be the ones working with my client directly. Instead, they will pass them on to somebody else. And that's what I do not want to happen. If I'm going to send a referral, I do not want you passing off my friend, which I tell everyone, this is my best friend that I'm, that I'm referring by the way, so it's just like another level of making sure that your client is taken care of. Oh, this is my best friend. They don't, they don't have to know otherwise, but it gives them like another level of, Oh shit. I, I need to make sure that this, this best friend of Allie is represented. So I, so I make sure that they're not going to be the pawning them off. 
if they do say that they're going to pawn them off, and of course they never say, yes, I'm going to pawn them off. Instead they say, oh, well, typically I have a, an opening, you know, door specialist and I have somebody that's going to, a specialist for this. As soon as they start saying those words, I'm like, okay, thanks. Next. That's just me, me you know, because, but I've been on, I've been that's burned hilarious. before where I have sent. Yeah. I used <laughs> to fucking pass off all the time. So it's so funny. Cause you're like literally talking about me where I'm like, Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to hand you over with the best agent on my team for this specialist, all the whole, whole thing. So um, <laughs> honestly, it's, it is good advice because if you're running like a traditional team, it depends on how you run it. But a lot of the team leaders are trying to feed everyone and they are not as invested as they would be if it was their own deal. It's in their yeah, there's just, I mean, I could talk a lot about on all, all of that psychology and stuff, but anyway, just Ali, just I mean, that's my fucking two cents. I don't know what it was. I, I get, it was one yeah, cent. no, <laughs> what? it was half a cent, Shelby. That's yeah, so that's fine. Cent, but. <laughs> no, but but that's exactly like where I was going is I have sent a, a referral to somebody that. Uh, even if I found that agent, that agent then said, Hey, I have to send this. I have to send this to my team leader. So, which is wild. I found an agent who said, thank you for almost giving me a hundred percent of, you know, mine, well, 70, 30. So they would have gotten 70%, but because they're on a formal team, they have to fuck themselves and tell their team leader. So their team leader takes 50% of that 70. And then they take the remaining 50% of that 70. And at that point, it's just, there's no not enough meat left from the bone for it to be worth it to them. And I have heard that from agents directly where they're like, Hey, at this point, I now I'm now only getting 40% or 35%. So it's, it's just not worth it at this time. And that is what made me realize I'm like, Oh shit. Like I thought that you were getting a lot more than that. I don't want anyone to work for 30%, you know, like what? So that's why I, I want to make sure that they're not on a formal team, that they're not going to be passed off. So I love the solo agents that are still doing stuff like taking care of the buyers and sellers directly. That is my, that's my like perfect avatar agent for me to refer to. That closes, of course. <laughs> so then from there, pros of referrals, in case I haven't yet sold you on this, like I mentioned in the very beginning, my business is unaffected and I'm moving across the country. What more do you want? <laughs> no, but it's, it opens up my schedule a lot more so I can do things that I want and I, I can handle a higher volume too. So at, at the time I was only able, or like when I first got licensed, I was only able to hold five, uh, tr- like five transactions, five closings at once. And of course, had I continued working with buyers and sellers directly, I would have increased that. I know, but I was like, you know what? Nah, I'd rather just do outbound referral agents. And therefore I can do a lot more than just five at a time. So, and I can work from anywhere. Yes, I'm moving across the country, but I can, because the amount of time is decreased and I connect the, I, you know, I connect the two agents after having a signed referral agreement. Don't ever connect people until you have all four parties sign you, the receiving agent, both brokers. At that point, it's just a matter of checking in. So I check in. I put it on my calendar and, or my CRM. And so I check in individually and in the group chat because I start a group chat and I'm in it throughout the whole thing. And this is where a lot of receiving agents will be like, oh, hell no. I would never be in a group chat with someone that's going to send me a lead and wants to be in the group chat forever. Do they not have any trust in me? I trust, but verify. And maybe that's my New York attitude where like, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> so I'm in that group chat and, and I tell them, I'm like, hey, I'm going to give you 30%. It's a client. It's not even a lead. It's a client especially if they're pre-approved, like here's the lender, let's all be in a group chat together. One, the group chat increases the conversion because I have found that even though I'm giving them the best real estate agent out there in that city, if the agent, if the client rather doesn't feel that connection yet, there's a higher probability that they will ghost them. But if they're in a group chat and I say, this is going to be the group chat throughout the entirety of the transaction, no matter what house you want to buy or up until you sell your house. At that point, everyone knows, okay, we're all in it. And the, to the client, you're there, you have their back. You're there to make sure that that agent that you're referring them to is on their toes the whole time. And then to the, to the receiving agent, it makes, it increases the conversion that the client doesn't ghost them because, Hey, the person that, that recommended me was, is still in this group chat. So don't ghost me. And then, so it's just like a win, I think it's a win-win all around. And 
I don't really even check in too much in the group chat. Do I read it? Yeah. You know, and sometimes I'll see sometimes like in the very beginning when I was first doing this, I'll see a client having asked a question that they don't get a response to until 24 hours later. And it, it was like a time pressing, you know, question. So at that point, can you imagine if you weren't on the group chat? You know, like it's so at that point, I if if it's not a good agent, I will then switch agents. <laughs> I will add that agent to my never work with again list. Because <laughs> always again, like make a make a referral list of those that you that those that you like, uh, those that you don't like. This is for agents, for contractors, for everything. And I just take it to the end. So I, I reach out to them individually and in the group chat. Hey, how are things going? Seriously, be straight up honest with me. Do you like working with Shelby? And or you know, et cetera. And that's better what, be yes. And if for some reason, and then and uh, that I mean, honestly, that's it. So it's 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 really simple. It opens up your calendar. And again, if you want these slides, I'm here for it. Just fucking send me a message. Allie the agent. If you have my number, shoot me a text. I'm here to send this to you. Our, I would love a copy of your referral, your outbound referral tracker. Do you have a copy or, yeah, how do you do that? How do you track? Of my the agents that I refer to or the list of clients that I have referred Sent out. Yeah. In theory, it's, you know, client name, date referred to who, check-in date, you know, or is that all in your CRM? It is actually all on Trello. So it'd be... Yeah, it, I'm still on Trello for that. Of course, everyone goes into my CRM and the CRM tasks me, it reminds me to check in on them because it's been a week. It's been, you know, whatever. But Trello is where I see overall. And I don't want to actually share the screen. So I'm just going to talk you through Trello. <laughs> so for, for clients' privacy. But Trello, I have a lot of different columns. So my first column is external referrals, which, which really, I think I've run out of columns actually. So if I were to do it again, I have one column, just like a, a brain, what do you call it? Just like, as soon as someone says, Hey, I'm moving brain to Vegas. Dump. Can you connect me to an agent brain dump? Thank you. Yeah. So I have the first column is going to be like a brain dump. Kelsey wants to move to Vegas. Okay. You know, and then during my time block, I will then find the agent or connect them to the agent, start the paperwork. So first column is brain dump of everyone that reaches out to you. Second column is external referrals that you need to do the paperwork on if it's going to be outside of your brokerage, because that's another step. And if in my business, I do not do paperwork. <laughs> so I have my transaction coordinator do it. I pay her $20 per referral to make sure that all four parties sign. And she pings in. She, yeah, she pings until all four parties have signed. And then boom, I pay, I pay her 20 bucks, whether or not we close. So then the next column is internal referrals, because that's what I do. It's, I mean, of course, every brokerage makes it super easy to send in-house referrals. If there's a good agent in, in eXp, the better, because it's so much easier. But of course, I'm not, I'm not married to any brokerage. So I just want to make sure that the client is taken care of with the best agent that there is. So that's internal. Then the next column I have is my TC, if it's in her hands. You know, if I have, if, if it's an external referral and she's doing the paperwork, I then drag and drop the client and all the information. And I'm waiting on her to give me all the, you know, the uh, referral form with all four parties sign. After that, then I have uh, a whole column on re referrals that are signed. We're good to go. Good to make the connection, but I haven't yet made the connection. They don't usually last too long there because as soon as it's, as soon as it's signed, I start the group chat, it's game on. So the next, the next column is conversation started. That's where I have the sign referral and we're in the group chat. Then the column after that is, you know, like home searching or, you know, the, the beginning portion of once it's in the other receiving agent's hands. And then I have a due diligence if they're under contract or yeah, if they're under contract, whether as a buyer or a seller, and then one week before close closing, and then archives like close within the last uh, over a year ago and then of course uh, my last column is dead leads apple listeners this short pause is to ask you for a review here's how to do it back out of the specific episode go to the page where you see all the episodes scroll down keep scrolling perfect now tap those five stars thank you so much back to the show i think i think that that part is really helpful i'm glad you went through that because it's like the I feel like tracking is something you and I fucking love tracking. Like we love our spreadsheets and like making and Trello and like having everything in its place. But I do think that it's something that like takes this concept of, yeah, absolutely. I want to be a referral agent, of course. 
and break it back down into the, okay, this is how I actually make sure that it happens. And then I keep tabs on it and then I get paid and I make my $200,000 a year. No. Yeah. So love it. Thank you for sharing. That was very helpful. Yeah. The trail apart. Sorry. I know you're not done. (laughs) Or maybe you are. Actually, I mean, yeah, that that's pretty much it. Like Actually, Shelby, do you remember what other questions people had? Because I know people ask, how do you find an agent? How do you mm-hmm. vet an agent? So I went over that, unless I should elaborate more. Do you remember any other questions from, from rock stars? No, I, I remember. And so, okay, just this is my question again. Other than the actual paperwork, does your VA do anything else within this process? My VA actually does not do, well... So my TC sorry, does the paperwork TC. for, yeah, yeah. My TC only, do, at this time, only does the fur, only does the paperwork. Cause I just, I hate paperwork. If you guys know me, I am never on Skyslope. I don't even know how to do it. Again, that's different from knowing the contract. Like, of course you should know the contract, but I just don't want to learn how to do that digital stuff. Nothing. <laughs> God, I'm such a fucking boomer. But uh, yeah, so all she does is make sure that the all four parties have signed. She'll ping up until then. And at that point, she gives it to me and that's it. She she wipes her hands clean. I pay her the 20 bucks. That's it. At some point, as I continue doing even more of this, I would like someone to manage this, but it would have to be like maybe like a portion, like a percentage of what I make. So I'm still working out the, the details there. As of right now, I'm good to just do it myself, especially since this is the only thing I'm doing really. Totally. Yeah. That's and Ali, you, the way that you and I do referrals is a little different because you are, like you said it, you've like really built usually relationships with these people. They're not just random leads. They're like clients. Whereas like I used to get random ass like leads all the time, not clients, just like people who are like, I heard your bigger pockets podcast and I want to do X, Y, and Z or whatever. And so for me, I leveraged a lot more of it because there wasn't the personal connection. And in exchange for that, I did not get the payout that you did. Like the way that you're doing it is how you absolutely fucking make way more money. But the reason why I was asking you about leverage is because it still definitely works. The lead would come in and from the very beginning, if I didn't know the person, I would toss it out right away and I would loop in my virtual assistant. And so my virtual assistant is the one who manages all of our referrals. And so that's why I was asking, again, your way is better because your way is a higher close rate and you make a lot fucking more money off of it. But if they, if someone's out there, maybe you're looking for a more leveraged way that if you don't know the fucking leads that you're getting as much, having the virtual assistant come in, she has email templates and a timeline for, for following up that when the lead comes in, she's the one who does the referral form, but also connects the lead with the agent and follows up to make sure that they connected and follows up until hypothetically closing. But I've already said it 14 times, but Allie's way is ultimately better if you want to make sure you get paid more. <laughs> I, I'm glad you mentioned that because as I transitioned out of, you know, not that I'm, so my, my sphere of military being that I've been out of the military for a year and a half, I don't know, that's getting smaller and we're moving to an area where there's no active duty Air Force base. My my lead pool, client pool is coming more so now from YouTube, which mm-hmm. are going more from clients to leads, you know, they don't love me as much. They don't trust me yet. Right. So here. what I'm actually, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So what I actually do and, and plan on doing there for those that don't already trust me, I'm actually going to meet with them over zoom on that first call and just give them like an overall, Hey, this is, this is how you buy. This is how you sell. And then, and I'm going to connect you to an agent. Uh, and I say the agent's name, or maybe maybe I don't sometimes, but I'm, I'm still perfecting this process, being that I'm going from sphere that loves me to a little bit more leads. So, and to to keep, to increase the higher conversion, yes, is it annoying? To, oh, I don't want to say annoying, but is it like a hassle? Ah, fuck, I don't want to say a hassle. Shit, you know, like it's a lot. It's because what other outbound referral agent is meeting with the clients over Zoom? You know, like usually it's just a handoff. That's all that's where referral yeah. is, you know. But I want to increase the conversion there because they reach out to me from YouTube. They want to see, they want to see me. So I'm gonna be there for that first call. And of course, a year from now, I might I might have been like, hey, that was a terrible mistake. But as of now, I'm gonna be there for the first call and then start the group chat with with the agent that is willing to be there throughout the, you know, in the group chat for the entire transaction. So that's what I'm doing. And that's Sam Cottle. I feel like I'm sure you guys have talked about this, but I feel like 
whatever his strategy that he's worked in is probably going to be similar to what you need because he also is doing it all through YouTube and also has, you know, referral agents, whatever. Talk to Sam if you haven't already. Yeah. I'm sure you have. Oh, by the way, oh, we're yeah. having him on yeah. for Team Sync in May. So another YouTube more deep dive. I thought you would like that. Surprise, Allie. Just for you. Oh, yeah. I love Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In case okay. you guys don't know who Sam is, check out a, yeah. a previous episode and check out his YouTube channel, Living in Tampa. So, but yeah, that's it. In case you guys have any questions, reach out to me, Ali the Agent. Reach out to Shelby, The Shelby Show. Reach out to Sam, Living in Tampa. And we're all here to help. And if you want the slides, let me know. Other than that, be a bro and share this show. Bye. Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show.